Hi, welcome back to my channel Pi by Me Maths. This is by Juvas Devan. Look at this question now. Prove that minus n square minus 2 and minus 3 is always negative for all n belongs to R, a set of all real numbers. So start from the expression. Take minus as a common factor of minus plus 2n plus 3. Just because you have a negative sign outside, you cannot say this is always positive. But because what if this is a negative number? What if this is minus 5 or some value of n? Minus into minus 5, it's a positive number. So just because you have a negative number, negative sign outside, you cannot say this is always negative. So how are we going to prove this? I'm going to keep the negative sign outside and I apply completing the square here. n square plus 2n, half of 2 is 1. So I put 1 square minus 1 square plus 3. You should know the completing the square method. So the three terms can be combined as n plus 1 whole square. Minus 1 plus 3 is 2. Now listen to me carefully. We know n plus 1 whole square because of the square this will always be greater than or equal to 0. Do you agree with me? Because even if it's a negative number, the moment you square it, it becomes positive. But when n takes negative 1, negative 1 plus 1, 0. That's why I put greater than or equal to 0 for all values of x belongs to r. You need to start using these symbols. If this is a positive number, definitely plus 2 also, therefore, n plus 1 whole square plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0 for all x belongs to r. Right? Because this is already positive, you are adding another positive number. So if this whole thing is always positive. If you multiply by a negative sign, this will become negative, negative number always. Right? So you can write therefore minus of n plus 1 whole square plus 2 is less than or equal to 0 for all n belongs to r, not x. And then write the conclusion step. What's the conclusion step? Therefore, minus n square minus 2n minus 3 is less than or equal to 0 for all n belongs to r. Hence, proof. That's how you prove this. So remember this. You cannot take a particular number and sub in here and prove this. That's wrong. You won't get a single mark. Okay, we learned a little bit about proof by deduction. There are a few more things you need to learn here. Now, whenever they say uh, they want you to prove the statement is positive, you need to prove that the statement can be written as a square of something. If they want you to prove that a statement is always negative or less than zero, you need to prove that it can be written in the form of square of something but with a negative sign in front. And if you need to prove something is always even, you have to write the expression in this form, two times something. For all, it can be two times something plus one or two times something minus one. This is a general way of proving the statements. And let's say they want you to prove that the given statement is a multiple of multiple of 3. You have to prove that this can be written in the form 3 times something. 3 times something is always multiple of 3. It is not a multiple of 3. If a number is not a multiple of 3, you will have one remainder here. It can be 1 or 2. So you need to write the expression in this form. 3 times something plus 1. Uh, 3 times something plus 2. 3. That's all. You cannot write 3 times something plus 3. Because it's eventually divisible by 3. So only 2 cases. So remember all this. Because these things are going to be useful. When you apply proof by deduction. Now let's look at few more questions. Where we apply these stuffs. Look at this question. We need to prove that something is greater than or equal to 4. So what I want you to do, I want you to collect everything one side. Proving this is same as proving this side. These two are same. 
because if you put 4 here, 20 minus 4 is 60. Because we have learned how to prove something is positive. We haven't learned how to prove something is greater than or equal to 4 or some weird expression. So when you see an inequality, connect all the terms to one side. We can easily prove this by applying completing the square. Don't take the whole thing, just take this expression x square plus 8x plus 16. You can write this as x plus 4 whole square. And you need to write x plus 4 whole square is greater than or equal to 0 for all x belongs to R. Start using these symbols. This will always be greater than or equal to 0. If this is greater than or equal to 0, definitely x square plus 8x plus 16 is greater than or equal to 0, right? Because it's the same thing, therefore. And then if this is greater than or equal to 0, if you add 4 both sides, you got the expression already. Therefore, you got the original statement already. x square plus 8x plus 20 is greater than or equal to 4 for all x belongs to R. So, you need to write the statement of proof. This is basically the statement of proof. The conclusion shell just put hence proved. So, remember this. You are going to see past paper questions like this. You will be given some expression in terms of x and y here. Something else here. You collect everything one side and prove. Probably I will show you an example now. Now look at this past paper question taken from June 2019 past paper. Question number 3. Prove that x minus 4 whole square is greater than or equal to 2x minus 9 for all real values of x. So what I told you when you get questions like this, first step, collect all the terms to one side. Expand this, you will get x square minus 8x plus 16. Put this term also here, minus 2x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. Proving this is hard, but proving something is positive is easy. We know what to do already, right? We need to write this as a square of something. You can have plus some positive number, doesn't matter. So you simplify this, you will get x square minus 10x plus 25 is greater than or equal to 0. So what we are trying to do here, instead of proving this, instead of proving this, we are going to prove this. This is easy. You can take this statement, you can write it as x square minus 10x plus 25 is same as x minus 5 whole square. And write x minus 5 whole square is always positive for all x belongs to R. If this is always positive, therefore x square minus 10x plus 25 is greater than or equal to 0 for all x belongs to R. So we proved this statement already. If we proved this statement, that means automatically this statement is true. So you can straight away write, therefore, x minus 4 whole square is greater than or equal to 2x minus 9 for all x belongs to R, hence proof. That's all. So I have taken one more question from your past paper, January 2021 past paper. Question number 5, again we see an inequality here. So what we need to do, we collect all the terms one side, you can write it as 3x minus 2 root of 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So instead of proving this inequality, we can prove this inequality, it's the same thing. So how do we prove something is positive? We need to write this whole expression as a square of sum. So you have to find out, maybe you may like to pause the video and check how you can write this expression as a square of something. Okay, I will explain now. So, how are we going to write this? Write the expression, just don't take the whole thing, just take this expression. 2 root of 3x plus 1 is equal to root 3x square minus 2 root 3x plus 1 square, which is square root of 3x minus 1 whole square. That's all, we have written this as a square of something. You can write square root of 3x minus 1 whole square is greater than or equal to 0 for all x is greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, you write this statement. 
3x minus 2 root of 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 for all x is greater than or equal to 0. If this statement is true, automatically this is true because if you put this on the other side, you get this statement. So you can write therefore 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 root of 3x for all x is greater than or equal to 0, hence proof. For every question, you need to write the conclusion steps. So I have taken one more past paper here, past paper question from June 2021, question 3 double I. We need to prove that this is not a multiple of 3 for all n belongs to set of all natural numbers. The natural numbers are basically 1, 2, 3, etc. So we have discussed this before. When we want to prove that something is not a multiple of 3, you have to write it in the form 3 times something plus 1 or 3 times something plus 2. So that's what we are going to do. Just expand it. A plus B whole cube. If you don't know the identity, write it 3 times and multiply. The identity is this. A plus B whole cube is a cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube. You don't have to memorize it. If you don't know this, write it three times and then multiply, open the brackets. So you will get a cube plus 3a square b is 1 plus 3ab square is 1 plus b cube minus n cube is equal to n cube can be cancelled. You are left with this 3n square plus 3n plus 1. I'm going to take 3 as a common factor. I got this form. 3 times something plus 1. So when you divide this by 3, you will always get the remainder of 1. That means this is not divisible by 3. So you can say therefore n plus 1 whole cube minus n cube is not a multiple multiple of 3 for all n belongs to natural numbers hence proved